Okay, so let's say you're asked to graph an equation that looks like this. It's a polynomial equation, which you learn how to graph by hand when they're easily factorable. This, however, is not easily factorable, and you don't have a graphing calculator. If you're going to try and do this by hand, what you're going to end up doing is probably sitting and plugging in points into an XY table for 30 minutes before you have enough to actually see the shape of the graph. Let's look at a better option, though. You can actually graph uh, polynomial equations in Microsoft Excel. So go ahead and open that up, and a spreadsheet like this will pop up. Okay, the first column um, is going to be the values of your domain, so the values that you want to use for x. Generally, I just have my graph go from negative 10 to 10. Um, so what I'm going to do is, in the first box, you put in the first value, or the minimum value of your domain. Okay. You can have it go up in units of 1, so negative 10, negative 9, negative 8. Um, I'm going to have it go up in units of 2, so the next number will be negative 8. Okay. Instead of going through and typing in all the numbers, you can just highlight those two numbers, then click this little box in the corner, hold down, and drag it down until it's at the maximum value that you want. Okay. So I have domain values from negative 10 to 10. In the B column, um, cell B1, you're going to start by putting the equation that you're using, the equation you're going to be plugging these domain values into. This is our equation here in Word. Um, when you're typing an equation into Excel, you don't need to use the Y variable. You just start with an equals, and that tips off the program that, hey, I'm entering an equation here. Okay? Um, start with coefficient. One important thing that you must remember is that any time you have multiplication in an equation, you have to tell the computer. You can't just say 2x to the fourth because it's technically 2 times x. Okay? So anytime you have multiplication, you need to give the sign, which is an asterisk. So shift 8 is what you need to hit. We also can't just use x because the computer doesn't know what is x. Um, but what we can do is click here on our domain value because, well, that is the corresponding x value. So now the computer knows, all right, we're using this domain, okay? Um, and then to the fourth power. To do power, you do this little caret symbol, shift 6, then 4, okay? So we just entered this part, 2 times x to the fourth power. So just continue on. We have plus 5 times domain, or x, to the third power, minus 2 times x domain plus 4. And there's our equation. Okay? This little box in the corner down here, when your cursor makes this little cross, you can double click and it will fill in all the values using that equation for each of these domain values. This is the corresponding range value. Okay? Let's make this bigger. Alright, to graph it then, what you need to do is highlight the complete domain and range. Up here at the top, go to Insert, Scatter, and just click on the first scatter plot. First thing, get rid of this little legend on the side. Hit Delete, you don't need that. Right click on a point and go to Add Trend Line. Okay, it's going to start off thinking it's linear. Obviously, it's not. This is a polynomial function, so go ahead and tell it. Still doesn't quite fit. Um, it needs to know the order, which is the same as degree. Okay. Our equation here has degree of 4. Remember, that's the biggest exponent. So go ahead and tell it, and notice how it curves to fit a fourth degree a polynomial function. Okay. Go ahead and close out of that. All right. You should know by now that if something has degree 4, it can have at most three turning points. Well, I don't see any turning points at all, and frankly, it looks very flat right through here, which a polynomial shouldn't. It should be constantly curving. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on this spot here to see if there are any turning points. Those are important. If they're there, they need to be shown. So what you need to do to zoom in is to right-click on a number in the axis. We'll start with the y-axis. Go down to Format Axis. All right, this brings up a menu for minimum and maximum values of the axis. Right now it's going from negative 5,000 to 30,000, which seems a little bit excessive, because really it looks like nothing is going on below zero and above 5,000 pretty much. And we can see from our graph here, or our range here, 
there are no negative numbers and there are no turning points beyond 5,000. In fact, there might not even be any beyond 1,000, but we'll start off slow. So I'm going to have this start just a little bit below zero, so at negative 10. And I'll just have it go up to 5,000, and we'll see where that gets us. Okay. Um, it says here major unit and minor unit. Minor units, you don't need to worry about at all. Major units are represent each of these lines that go across. Um, so if you want to, you can change what the major unit is. I'll have it go in units of 100 just to see what that looks like. Oh, wow, that's really crowded. Let's try something bigger. Let's do units of 500. That's better. Okay. Um, I still don't really see any turning points. And once again, it looks like there's nothing going on above 490. Nothing important. The graph is just going up to infinity. So I'll just have the maximum of the graph be 500. And I'll put major units in units of 50. All right, I'm starting to see some turning points down in there. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. I'll have my maximum be 100 instead of 500. Now I can see very clearly where the graph is turning. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. We have a lot of open space over here. So what I'm going to do is zoom in on the x-axis as well. So right-click on a number, format axis. There's really nothing going on outside of negative 5 and 5. So I'm going to have those be my minimum and maximum values for my x-axis. And that looks a whole lot clearer. Okay, I can see all turning points and all intercepts, which are the important parts of the graph. Okay, once you're zoomed in far enough to be able to see all intercepts and turning points, the only thing you need to do is add a title. If you want to mess around with the color, that's fine, it's up to you. But the only other thing I require is go to layout, uh, chart title, above the chart, put a title, and that's going to be just, whoops, um, the problem number that you're working on. So if it's number one, just make it its title be number one. So what you're going to do then when you turn this in is you're going to just copy and paste the graphs into Microsoft Word. You'll have three or four graphs for your homework, so you should be able to get them all on one page. Okay, you don't need to have the equation there. You can go back and just delete that. Uh, actually, you probably won't have it there at all. Um, but what you need to turn in is just a page of the graphs. Okay, um, one small hint to avoid this pitfall. Um, when you go back to start the next problem, so problem two, don't delete all of this, your domain and range and graph here, because what that will do then is it will also delete the graph that you copied and pasted into Word. Those are still linked. So what you need to do is leave all of this here, but go down here and tab over to a new sheet. And then in here, start your next problem, get your graph, copy paste it into Word, and then for the next problem, start a new sheet, um, because if you delete and just go over what your old work was, it will replace it um, instead of saving it. So yeah, that is a quick and simple way to graph polynomials using Microsoft Word. Hopefully that was helpful.